In Oakland, I had gone to honor a man who never realized or thought about being honored. His name is Pastor Fleming Henry. He provided a church when he had no money. He fed the homeless when he had no job. He changed a disruptive neighborhood into a safe haven. And he did it all with his deep faith and just being himself. How did he do it? Pastor Fleming Henry never knew that he was the inspiration behind the book, Street Safe Kids. Street Safe Kids is authored by Stephanie Mann. Her books, with the assistance of Nancy Reagan, are scattered across this nation in police stations and libraries to help people understand how to bring safety to their families and their communities. Today, Pastor Henry is going to find out that he was the inspiration to that book. <clears throat> in the noise, in the wind, crossing the streets and through the people in the crowds in Oakland, it was difficult for me to film this, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. Our guest today is a delightful man who has done a great deal in his community. We have come to honor him in Oakland, California. Welcome, Pastor Fleming Thank you. Henry. Thank you. Delighted Thank you. to meet you and to have the honor of interviewing you. Thank you. Pastor Henry, I see that your church has undergone quite a transformation. Please tell us about that. Well, uh, first of all, it's an old building, and it was, you know, just falling down. It was just going through, and everybody was telling me I need to raise some money rather than to put the money to the homeless folks that I was doing. I need to raise some money to be at a church. But I thought about the thing that was that the Lord told me. God said that he was going to fix it. This is Pastor Fleming Henry's church. This is what it looks like now that it's fixed. Very charming. Look how beautiful this church is now. This is really beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful job. Look, look at these beautiful pews. These are beautiful pews. Mm -hmm. They are beautiful they pews. Absolutely beautiful. Hey, my name is Ken Johnson, and um, I'm very well acquainted with with Pastor Henry. Um, he, back in the early '80s, he uh, had a homeless shelter right here in the dining room, where he allowed some of us homeless people to come and be indoors out of the winter weather. And um, I've been a member here ever since. And and. I thank God for I thank God for my pastor. I, I truly do. And as I was telling Rebecca, uh, the Lord has has blessed me to where now I'm not in line receiving a lunch. I'm passing out the lunches now. And that's just that's how that's how God can can bring you from one degree to another. And I've gone from being on the deacon board to being called to the ministry. And I've I've been a part of his ministerial staff for about ten years. And, and I, I thank God for him because he taught me how to be a man, how to how to deal with life. And I, I thank God for him. He is truly an outstanding man, truly an outstanding man. And I, I appreciate you all showing him some work. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I see that some of his quality awakened your own, and you have quality it, it, of your yeah, own. Look I, what I you're mean, doing I you, now. I look at that cat, and I just makes you want to run on. I mean, it really does. I mean, because if. Whatever you're going through, God has you going through that. But when you have someone that's there teaching you that it's going to be all right, go through it. But know that God got you going through it, and, and, and that's what he does. He, he, don't, he don't sugarcoat nothing. He don't say what you think you might want to hear. He tells you what the Word of God is. 
and that's what a lot of us need. I know I do. She in the book. I know I do. I, 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 I appreciate him. I really appreciate him. I really do. Really thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. My name is Sheila Tucker, and I've been a member here at New St. Paul for oh, a lot of years. I don't know how many years, but uh, Reverend Pastor Henry is just a terrific man. Not just as a preacher, but as a, a person, as a man. And I really adore him and can come to him with any kind, whether it be spiritual or personal or whatever. I really admire that about him. And I just couldn't see myself on anybody's tutelage but him. So I just want to say congratulations to him. He's well deserved. So he this Thank you so much. He is a wonderful man, and I appreciate your endorsing that opinion. I remember when, no I was, when we lived here, Thank sleeping you. right on this floor. Um, These are some of the sack lunches that he has prepared and gives to the homeless who walk in here freely to eat. And this is a room where he has invited them in out of the rain, out of the cold, and sometimes people have spent the night here. You can read that. Pastor Henry, for all you do in every season of our lives, thank you. My name is Richard Giaz, better known as Deacon Slam. Uh, the new Greater St. Paul Baptist Church uh, under Pastor Fleming Henry. And uh, what brought me in is uh, he just served meals, hot meals on Fridays. He used to come in, and before I known it, I was actually spending time with him doing different projects, and uh, he offered the open door for me to be one of his deacons. And I've been here, never missed a Sunday but one, and that's been three years. Ago. Wonderful. He's doing a great job and evidently you are too. Thank you. Got it. I am delighted to have this opportunity to interview you. You've done so much in your community and I see that your church has undergone a great transformation. And it's because you're here and it's because of your faith. Please share that with us. All right, then uh, I would say it's not because we have money uh, not because that we raise money to do it, but then uh, people in the community, well, the one, the critical one, was saying that I need to take the money that I was feeding the homeless folks with and try to do something about this building. And I kept telling them, I said, well, God told me he was going to fix it on his own terms. And so they was, they thought that I was gone and lost my mind, you know, going crazy or something, but I wasn't. I was just waiting on the Lord to do it. So uh, I waited, we waited, and you know what? Uh, uh, all of a sudden, I was down and putting buckets in. It was raining in the building and leaking all over the building. And I decided one day, I said, you know what? I'm not going to put another bucket down, <laughs> and I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to leave it like this. I said, Lord, this building belongs to you, and uh, you can let it rain all over Oakland and not one drop fall on this building if you want to. I said, but more likely you're not gonna do that. So I just left it out and I said, I'm gone. And I'm gonna leave it up to you. And I left out in less than three weeks, a uh, fella called me and he asked me how much would it be to uh, do the roof. I said, I have no idea. He said, well, find out. Uh, go and get some estimates on it. The smallest one I got was $60,000. Whoa. And he said, well, I'll give you half of it if you put the rest up. I said, well, we don't have any. <laughs> we don't have nothing. And so he said, well, I can't do it just like that. Hung up the phone. I said, okay. In about maybe an hour, he called me back. And he said, you know what? He said, find out what needs to be done to the building. And I called my secretary. We got together. <laughs> and we faxed to him everything we could find that needs to be done including this study and everything, the bathroom and all of that. So uh, he came, he said, I'll be down at 9 o'clock. And I said, yeah, I thought he was coming to talk to me. And he brought a whole crew along with him, and they started working the next morning and didn't stop until they finished it. Wonderful. And the lawyer down here, right when I call my friend down here, this is Lionel Wilson's brother. He used to tell me, he said, well, you know that uh, 
the Lord just don't do things like he used to. In Moses' time, God would, you know, you know, open the Red Sea and things. So I told me the same that he always have been, same today. So he came down that first morning when they was working. He said, well, what's going on? And I said, the Lord is fixing the building. He went back <laughs> and got his camera, and he started taking pictures that day. And he said, well, now he the one been bothering me about those doughs out there and how they was. <laughs> when it started so good, they took the whole roof off of this building and replaced it. And they did everything, paint the building, all downstairs, in style, down there. And uh, when they got through, when they got about halfway, he told me, he said, I'm getting in on this. <laughs> and you know what he did? He, he told me, he said, I'm going to put doughs up for you. I'm going to put that front door. That front door cost him over $6,000. And it cost him $3,000 to hang it. So when he got that, I told the church, I said, he don't know he's going to put some at the bottom too. He went in, he went in, got the doughs and had them hung, then he put the other. Now while they were doing it, he said, I'm going to give you, you know what I want to do? I said, well, I want to give you some pews to put in the church when they get through them. And uh, I said, well, good. He went and told the pew man to come down. And I was just going to get the cheapest pew I could find. You know, I just wanted some new pew. But the Lord happened to send him down here while the pew man was here. And he said, oh, no. He asked the man for the best that he had on the market. Wow. And that's what he put in the building, the best pew they had on the market. And you know what he got in on? Juan Wilson, he got in all of this. That's my good friend now. And he <laughs> said that he had never seen this happen before. They did all of the work and didn't charge us not one quarter. Well, you are a miracle in faith in what has happened. This is a miracle in faith. It has to be. It's God. Yes. It's God that's working, you know, not because I work with the people. I stopped working on a job. Uh, 42 years ago and uh, the Lord told me to come to this building and they have them put me on Sarah and they'll pay me not one thing for doing it and I raised four children and was out of Sarah from the church just depending upon God and, and what happens in this church what is it known for and what are we about to do today <laughs> well it's known about Feed and take care of the community. That's the reason I changed the name. It was New St. Paul Baptist Church, and I changed the name to the New St. Paul Community Baptist Church because we're all about helping the community out, and this is what our church is about, helping the community. Even though you look at us, we don't have nothing to give, but we're always giving. Yes, you are. How yeah. many hungry people are fed here? Oh, approximately... Uh, 150 uh, each Friday come to bag lunch but when I was when I was doing my meals at least about 300 every Friday you know yeah that's wonderful and that's been going on for about 28 28 years you know so you feed them spiritually you feed them physically you feed them yeah. emotionally I feed them, you know, I feed them spiritually. So anytime I give up on something, God always come in. Every time I give up, like I told you, I gave up on this water leak, he always come in. So once you let go and let God, it was okay? The minute you let go. If we can learn how to let go everything, God will have it. <laughs> Never. So we have to learn how to trust God, that part. Yeah. You have made an absolute tremendous difference in life more lives than you know. You're loved by so many people in the community. You're a necessary part of their life. They believe just knowing you're here, it gives yes. them strength. That's on my, my card is if I can help someone as I travel this way, my living will not be in vain. I, I guess maybe the first homeless person I ever seen, he came and he told me he was homeless. And I wanted to know about, you know, homeless, and he told me he had a job, and he had lost everything he had. Wow. And then, uh, that was amazing, so 
Then about that time, everybody started coming. Uh, Kitty Barfield, she's late going on. She was there and in choir rehearsal one night, and it was raining and cold. I think that was about the coldest one was back in eighty something that we ever had, you know, since I've been in California fifty some years. And uh, about maybe about thirty people showed up in choir rehearsal was outdoors homeless, and they it was raining and so she called me. She said these folk here we don't know what to do with them, so I can't see these folk back out in the rain. And that's basically where we started taking care of homeless people. But we was already feeding people, you know, before then. But just when the homeless started out, and Mother Wright came out there in the park. And that's how I met Stephanie, through Mother Wright. She was out there helping me. Stephanie, he spent a couple of nights with her down here with the home. We had everybody in the church. And Stephanie is the director and founder of an organization called Safe Kids Now. Oh, and really? her friendship with you has been several years. Yeah, yeah. And you are one member of the community that she is extremely proud of. And yeah. to her, I have the honor of meeting you. All right, then. That's, that's good. And you know, like I say, Steph, any time I hear her voice, she say, you know what it is. I, <laughs> I will never forget her voice. You know, I never forget her. Because she was, she was with, right with us, part of our dealing with the homeless. And I was just delighted to have her working with us. We'd come down in the kitchen sometime and she, she'd just fall in where she needed. And that's the, that's what I, that's the kind of chase that we have, fall in where you need it. Mother Wright was out there in the park trying to feed people and take care of she people, was wasn't she? She took care of many people out there. And yes. you opened the doors to the church and I, said, come in. I opened the doors to the church, you know, for her and the people. I say when it's raining or whatever it was, she was welcome to come, you know, and and just work with the work together. Did you know, Pastor Fleming Henry, that you were the inspiration for the book, Street Safe Kids, that was authored by Stephanie Mann? I did not. I didn't know that. Did you know that you inspired her to add that to the many books that she had written because of what she experienced here in the park, in this church, and in knowing you? Well, I didn't know it, but I'm glad that it happened. You know, I didn't, I know Stephanie always was here to get all the information that she could. She was seeking for it. And uh, thank God that she found it. Yeah. What you did in this neighborhood and what Mother Wright did in that park created an emotional and intellectual tie with so many people you will never know because now it's in a book it's oh, on the web yeah. it's in a lot of places I came here to personally thank you yes. for what you've done yeah. and not just from me yeah. from people you'll never meet from people you've never known, and from many who will love you and have known you and thought I've known you all your life. That's so amazing. thank you so much for being you. Yeah. I'm glad I am me. <laughs> We're glad you're you too. It's people yeah. like you that change lives, one day at yeah. a time. Yes, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And one life at a time. Except in your case, you just do it by the hundreds. As <laughs> many come, as many you can say. And, uh, that's, that's the whole idea. I think I maybe got that from my grandfather throughout the time. My mother's father, he was, he was a minister and he, they say back in the Depression time that he would just feed people. People just come to his house, you know, because they had nothing to eat. And he always was able to make a way for them. And I've been passing the 42 years. They say I wasn't going to make it. Everybody say, no, he's not going to make it, but I did. 42 years I've been pastoring this church. And thank God I don't see no reason not to be pastored until I leave here. What would you like to tell our listening audience? What message would you like to leave them with? Well, because I'm a minister and pastor of the church, I would like to leave the message that God is just as real as he ever been. Uh, eventually, we're going to come to where we're going to have to depend upon God. 
and that's the reason why I try to teach my people faith is the most important thing of all because if you have faith you don't need no money <laughs> I want to thank you. thank you thank you so much yes ladies and gentlemen you've been listening to Pastor Flemon Henry in Oakland California an unforgettable pastor an unforgettable man thank you again A message from safekidsnow.com. Organized neighborhoods provide a safety net for children. Work together. Organized neighbors prevent crime better than the police. Work with all of your neighbors. <laughs>